We got 20 hot wings. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yes, Pink Panther Took here sneaking up on you to have a nice 20 hot wings feast with the kernels. Feast your eyes deep into that bucket of life force, goodness, crispy, amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, what is up? What is truly good with y'all? As you guys can see here today, we have a beautiful pile of 20 hot crispy wines from the Colonel himself. On the right here, we have the Honey Moutard. Looking amazing. KFC's Honey Moutard is great. And then, of course, we have our classic ranch over here. I am very, very excited to get into this. Alongside of this, we're also gonna have a tale from my server days, quite a few years back, but around Christmas time. And for some reason, right now, this whole time of year, everything was just reminding me of this. Also, I was going back into my notes in my phone, which due to the channel, I usually take life experiences and I jot them down. And I was just going through my notes for whatever good reason, and I saw this, it says, Dustin story. Now that's from a few years ago, but I forgot to tell you guys this. Uh, it's a little lesson in don't treat people like shit because you wear a suit and colorful socks and they serve you food and stuff. But we're gonna go ahead and loop around to the moral of the story by the end of it. So please stay tuned while we enjoy these here. Beautiful, crispy, crispy wangs. So let's just crack into one right away and see what we're working with. Very nice pull apart, easy to take apart wings. Nice inside. A honey mustard dip. Don't know when the last time we had some wings on this channel was. Knowing my wing obsessed ass, probably not that long ago, but man <laughs> they were just what was on the mind today and i had uh i had always seen this deal at kfc when i've been recently 20 20 wings for 20 bucks And every single time I thought to myself, I gotta get that someday. So for 20 bucks, I say this is a good pile, good pile of food, good pile of wings, you know? I can't be hating on that or that. Mm. Some of the best breading. They're just mildly spicy too. Not too, too hot. Perfect. Okay. A story. from a few years back at this point. This one's for all my servers out there or my food industry people, just hospitality people, people who have been shit on by general public assholes uh, due to the fact that they're in the position that they are. Like some people are like suit and tie guys and like think they're better than you and uh, because you're a server and, and in hospitality. Um, it's nice to get a little one-two jab karma with these guys or these people and very rarely in a server's position does it happen that you get 
to have that satisfaction. But in this instance, on this day, I certainly got to have a little bit of that satisfaction. We'll pay back, if you will. So the story goes as such. I was serving in a restaurant called Batch in uh, Toronto, in the downtown core. It was a little, you know, pubby upscale fare with like a nice variety of beers on tap. But we were right by the financial district. So on lunches, we would always get a large influx of suit and tie guys, you know, financial upscale type people, right? Now, don't get me wrong. Some people are great. They're not all like this. That's basically the whole moral of the story anyways. Don't judge a book by its cover. But this was in December, holiday season. Our lunches, this time of year, just busy. Always busy. Lunch, fill right up. Dinner, fill right up. We had an event space in the bottom of the restaurant that was having Christmas parties, all of the above, right? Just busy. And so it's the start of a lunch rush and I get this dude at a table and uh, I pull, over, pull up to him and you know, hey, how's it going? Can I get you anything? Start you off with bubbling water or still, whatever. And he's like, the only one there at the table so far, but he's waiting on his people. And he's like, just immediately, he's just like, I want to have an event here. Without answering my question about still or sparkling water, nothing, just like, he's just like, I want to have an event here. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. We can probably facilitate that for you. Um, It is really busy right now, and our dedicated event planner is actually not in today. He's off. So you're going to have to either call back and ask for Andrew was his name. I said you call back and ask for Andrew tomorrow or if it's not too inconvenient for you, just swing by on your lunch. If you're close, he'll be here then. You guys can figure something out. And he's like, so you can't get a hold of him today for me. And I was like, no, no, like he's not in. He's like, are you sure about that? just questioning my, my knowledge of where I work. I'm like, yes, man, I'm very familiar with him. Him and I talk a lot. His name's Andrew. He's not in today. He'll be in tomorrow at this time. Unfortunately, I don't have a card of his to give you because he's kind of like a freelance seasonal event guy. He does more than just this place. So he juggles places. But like I said, you call tomorrow, come back tomorrow. We can get you in, in contact with him and go from there. And he's like, you know what? I think I'm going to need to see the manager about this. And I'm like, all right, fair enough. I can go see what he's up to. But like I said, it's lunch rush, holiday season, 
we're busy. And the manager has nothing to do with event planning because we have a dedicated event planner. And he's just going to tell you more of the same. And he, he basically was like, go fetch. Go to my manager. He's busy dealing with shit. Right, we got all the employees. We got tables. Everything's full. Like, he's just dealing with... He's one, he's one manager on. And uh, I basically tell him what's going on. And he goes... Just go back, let them know that so-and-so is in tomorrow. Contact us tomorrow, figure it out. I'm like, I already told him that, but sure, I'll tell him again. So I go back. I say, hey, look, man, my manager's uh, indisposed at the moment. Like I said, very busy. And he said what I said. Contact us tomorrow via phone or come in, figure it out for you. This guy goes, into his pocket. He goes, I'll tell you what, here's what I'm gonna do. Pulls out a business card with his name on it. It was Dustin. I can't remember his last name for the life of me. But that's why I have it in my phone is Dustin's story. But so his name was Dustin something or other. Had his business card looking important or whatever. Hands it to me, he goes. Take this. Get it to the right person. And if they want my business, they can contact me. And I'm like, sure, man, no problem. Gotcha. Now, would you like some still or sparkling water or maybe a beer or something? Can we can we move forward with the everything else here? So anyways, I take his car, get him a drink. I pass the card off to my manager. I'm like, hey, man, here, he said, here's his card. You guys can get a hold of him if you would like his business. And at this point in the season and the year where I was working, they were spoiled for choice for business. It's so many people were down, were trying to book parties. It's like, you know what I mean? They could care less either way in a sense. So the rest of the lunch rush, stressful Christmas time, service table, his other bright colored sock, cronies get there because all you know, this is what you'll learn if you work around any financial institution dude they all wear like lame ass fucking socks like they wear like these nice suits and then all their socks are either like these like stripe print or argyle print it's like some sort of like brotherhood sock brotherhood or something i personally find it pretty lame but hey do you probably you probably don't like the fact that i wear pink hats so that's fine But don't act superior to me because you have colored weird socks. So this guy was probably 30. About. And with the rest of the lunch, he was very dismissive. Not a lot of P's and Q's, thank yous. Anything like that. Your standard kind of shitty customer behavior and kind of douchey behavior. So I get off shift and it's like 5 p.m., something like that, 5 30. Meet up with my girlfriend at the time. And uh, we chill at the condo for a bit. 
And then we decide, let's go out just down the street. It's like two blocks away. We go to a restaurant called Dog and Bear. Just get some drinks. Vibe out, hang out, chill out. So we do that. But our lush asses end up drinking right until last call. <laughs> Basically 1.32 o'clock. And this is on like a Wednesday. But hey, hashtag server life, right? That's how we do. Because we don't work regular hours. Chances are we didn't work tomorrow or maybe if we did it would be maybe at night varying schedules so we get done drinking and we go back to my condo and we're cruising down the hall and you know when you're just in that giddy drunk state and you don't know how loud you are. You're just laughing, having a good time. And you're not, not really aware of your surroundings or your scenario. And your volume level. Well, that was our case this night. Drippy, drippy. I'm coming down the hall and I had told my girl the story because that's what we as service people or just people in relationships like you, you just vent about your work shit especially when she was a server as well so she like we, you would always just vent about shit so she knew of the story we're coming down the hall and the hall goes boom and then it goes do do my door is here and there's a door here. And then this is like this little half of this, little, I don't know what to call it, that, like a Z kind of. But like this door to this door, you can see diagonally, right? And right as we get around the corner, almost at my door, this door over here just flings wide open. And this guy comes out in his boxers and a t-shirt and fancy socks. <laughs> And he's just raging before he can even register anything. He's just raging. He's like, can you guys keep it down? Be quiet. You guys are always so loud out here. Every night. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa in my head real quick. First of all, you live in a condo building. People are going to pass by and be going home and you're going to hear things. That's the nature of living in an apartment or condo building. Sorry, pal. Secondly, it's not like we're standing out here arguing. We're literally just passing by laughing and about to be in my door. It's like literally like, ha, 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 ha in my door, right? And third, what do you mean? It's us every night. Don't you think there's other people all around you who drink and come home late and serve and da 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 all these different things? Because my floor was a party floor. Like, everybody around me was young. There would be people partying on my floor all the time. So I'm like, how dare you even know? Like, how could you even know that it's us? Right? But then, once all those questions settle in very quickly... I just look at the guy and I'm like, no fucking way. And my eyes light up as I look at him. He's looking at me. And I'm like, it's you. <laughs> I'm like, I served you today down at Batch. You wanted to have the Christmas event and the dude wasn't in. 
I was like, and so you acted rude about it and left me your card. And I'm, I'm like, Dustin, right? And he's like, oh, like he doesn't know how to react because he knows he's like caught in this weird thing and he's being kind of like a weird and taller next door neighbor dick. And I'm like, yo, this is hilarious. I look at my girlfriend, I'm like, this is the dude I was telling you about from today. And this is also me in my drunk state having like this, you know, drunk confidence, especially when you're kind of in a mode, in a zone of like, you've been pissed off all day about this fucking loser. <laughs> so... I'm like, remember when you treated me shitty today? And like looked down on me because I was your server. Isn't it funny that we're neighbors? That must mean that I make either the same money as you or more money than you. Which the latter is probably true because I had not just that serving job, I had another one too. And the other thing too is there's so many people that live in the suit and tie world that are making like 40 grand a year and they act because they have a suit on. Like they're this hot shot. And in, in a big city, if you get a... Heat's kicking in. If you get a serving job at a good restaurant... You could make some legit coin, especially if, like me, you were hustling two places. So it felt so good in that moment just to be kind of drunk, a little cocky, a little tipsy, but just no filter and be like, remember when you treated me like a dick because you thought I was less than you? And now it turns out we're fucking neighbors, buddy. Joke's on you. Oh, and I have a hot girlfriend too, by the way. Because <laughs> I saw him kind of looking at her being like, oh, this guy's got it figured out. <laughs> so it was a very satisfying moment. And it was amazing because I'm off the clock just being a civilian and I get to say whatever the fuck I want to say because so many times in serving positions, you have to hold your tongue. You have to allow yourself to be treated less than because you need your job. Customer is always right. Wrong. <laughs> but it was so good. And then from that point on though, which was both hilarious and awkward as shit, Awkward as shit, not awkward, awkward as shit. Um, at first, for a long time, he didn't have a girlfriend, but we would always kind of cross paths and he would always have this weird, like, shitty fucking energy. Um, but then he got a girlfriend at some point, and me and my girlfriend at the time would always, like, without fail, like, so many times a week, we would be getting groceries at the uh, grocery store down below in the condo unit and then be going in and then you know like live in that condo that apartment life you always roll up and there's like people waiting for the elevator to open up and so many times me and her would roll up and it would be him and his girl and we would take such awkward uh, elevator rides together. And then, even worse is, when you get off, you're neighbors. So it's like, you both go the same way. And you have to do that awkward walk almost together, but a bit separate. Where you're all just like, either being dead ass quiet, or as couples, you're like low-key, like, whispering to each other, like keeping it quiet. 
So for a long time, we just had awkward, ongoing, weird passerby tension energy because this douche nozzle flipped out on us for really no good reason. Like I could understand if we were bickering in the hallway and it had been 20, 30 minutes. And if this was like a nightly regular thing, but it wasn't at all. It just was his character. He showed it in the restaurant. He showed it there. It was, I'm better than you. Shut up. The world revolves around me. It was his, is his whole nature. And, uh, I ain't got no time for people like that. And that dude, like, it just, some people, you could just tell, like, it's the way he dressed, too. Like, he had these stupid fucking scarves and these, like, jackets. And, and ugh, I just was like, man, like, but, hey, there's people out there like that, I guess. It's just great crazy that sometimes with people just by their clothing choices just by the scarf that they wear you know <laughs> that they're gonna treat you like a fucking peasant and you're just like cool man but you make 45k a year and you're not some like big wig hotshot CEO you're just another Joe in a tie with stripy socks in a suit. Thinking you're dope. So, don't judge a book by its cover. Now, that being said, it can go the opposite way. I've had dudes from that same vein of life with the same attire, everything, and they're the coolest fucking guys I've ever served in my entire life. They're just cracking jokes, super nice, tip well, engaging, treat you good. Amazing. So it just it varies person to person, but I will say this. The one thing that I notice is the dudes dressed like that who do treat you well are the are the veterans, the dudes who are Late 40s, 50s, 60, they're, they're actually making money. They, they're, they're legitimately wealthy. And they have no reason to have an ego to prove themselves. They, they know that they're independently a boss. And they have no reason to, like, you know, be like that. Because they're just like, I've been, they know that they're like, we've been to a, a million lunches. We go to dinners all the time. It's just routine for them. They've got money. They're successful. They're settled in. They understand that there's no reason to be that way. And to be successful in the in the in a business world like that, you have to have a certain way of carrying yourself with with communicating with people and treating people because you're taking business meetings over these lunches and shit talking about business and scaling up or whatever just doing deals and trades or whatever the hell you're doing like so it's like you want to represent yourself in a, in, a, in a good way to the person that you're taking a meeting with over lunch right like you don't want to look like a some weird old prick I don't think that'll get you that far with the person on the other side of the table that you're taking a deal with or taking a meeting with trying to make a deal I should say so it can go many ways but I was just perusing through my phone I saw that remembered it and uh, you know so yeah there's just like a funny kind of interesting one to me because it's like so many times almost never do you get the opportunity to like I don't want to say exact revenge, but like, you know, get to say your piece to someone who treated you like that when you were like at work, right? Like, just because you can never, 
you you know you can never do that at your job pretty much unless you just want to quit on the spot or get fired or whatever take that risk but it's just so many times so many people in these positions you just get treated like garbage and you just have no recourse so it just in this moment it felt so good to be like you treated me like shit you thought you're better than me and then you're my neighbor so shut the fuck up put on your striped socks be quiet okay you know what i mean <laughs> anyways that one's for my service people hope you all enjoyed it all y'all but more specifically you guys because you guys know what it's like and uh, until the next one you know what to do eat good live well stay true